Could rhinos be saved from extinction? Why did dinosaurs have wings? And could your dog vote at the next election? What a wild week. Welcome to What a Wild Week, a weekly series where I summarise some of the biggest stories to come out of the natural world each week. The world's first rhino IVF could save the species from extinction. There's been a monumental breakthrough in the realm of conservation, offering a glimmer of hope for one of the world's most endangered species. Here's what's been happening. Scientists have accomplished something which was once thought to be impossible, successfully carrying out the first in vitro fertilisation of a southern white rhino. Why is this such huge news? Well, it could hold the key to saving the critically endangered northern white rhino, of which only two remain in existence. Northern white rhinos differ from their subspecies cousins, the southern white rhinos, of which there are now around 16,000 thanks to conservation efforts. In vitro fertilisation, commonly known as IVF, involves retrieving eggs from female animals, fertilising them with sperm in a laboratory setting, and then implanting the resulting embryos into surrogate mothers or back into the original females. With only two female northern white rhinos remaining, and both unable to carry a pregnancy to term, the stakes couldn't be higher. In a last chance at survival, scientists from the Biorescue Consortium are attempting to implant lab-grown northern white rhino embryos into the related subspecies of southern white rhino that I mentioned earlier. Cut to September 2023. The first successful southern white rhino embryos were transferred into surrogates at the Old Pajita Conservancy in Kenya. It was a major success as the female rhino fell pregnant, but this huge victory sadly struck tragedy when the surrogate rhino and bull were both lost to an unrelated bacterial infection, leaving behind a 70-day-old fetus. Despite the devastating setback, scientists were undeterred, fueled with the proof that this technique can work. So what's the next step? To try and try again. Later this year, scientists plan to implant the first northern white rhino embryo, made with eggs harvested from the surviving females and sperm preserved from two long-departed males. But what would such a small population mean for the future of the species? The researchers are aware that there wouldn't be enough genetic diversity to create a viable population. So they're also working on another experimental technique, attempting to create rhino sperm and eggs from stem cells to go on to produce embryos. But that's a story for another day. And what about the future? Could this method be a game changer for other endangered rhino species, like the Sumatran rhino? And with rhinos facing threats from poaching and habitat loss, every tool in the conservation toolbox is sorely needed. The journey to save the northern white rhino is far from over. But with each milestone achieved, we inch closer to a future where these magnificent creatures can hopefully roam freely once again. What we're witnessing is not just a scientific breakthrough, but a beacon of hope for conservation efforts worldwide. Robot Dinosaur reveals insights into the evolution of feathers. How did wings and tails in birds come to be? It's a mystery that's captivated scientists for ages, And we're about to cover some fascinating insights. For centuries, the origins of wings and tails in birds have remained shrouded in mystery. But thanks to the latest research, we're starting to piece together the puzzle. To truly set the scene, we need to go back to the Jurassic period. Feathered dinosaurs roamed the earth, sporting what scientists call proto-wings small wing-like structures made of special feathers known as pinaceous feathers. But here's where it gets interesting. These proto-wings weren't for flying. They had a different purpose altogether. Enter the flush pursue hypothesis. Now let's break this down. So some birds like the northern mockingbird employ what's known as a flush pursuit strategy to catch their dinner. They do this using wing and tail displays to visually startle and chase out hidden prey. In other words, flush them out. But how do we know this strategy dates back to the time of the dinosaurs? Well, it's all thanks to a nifty little robot called Robopteryx. 
and some clever experiments done by a team of researchers. By mimicking the movements of ground foraging birds and observing wild grasshoppers, the researchers uncovered some fascinating parallels. They also filmed the entire thing and it's amazing, so let's have a look. So they discovered three ways that dinosaurs with proto wings might have flushed out their prey. First, the grasshopper or prey flees in response to the Robopteryx expanding its proto wings. Second, the grasshopper flees in response to the Robopteryx folding the proto wings. And thirdly, the grasshopper flees in response to the tail movements. So what does this all tell us? Well, grasshoppers were more likely to flee when faced with proto wings, especially those with contrasting patterns. Although dinosaurs likely used this technique during the Jurassic period, it was our bird friends of today that inspired this study. Several species of birds, such as the painted red start, the slate-throated white start, the spectacled white start, and the hooded warbler, have all shown that contrasting wing and tail feathers, often with black and white patches, trigger their prey to flee, making it easier to catch them. Overall, this study is a bit of a game changer in our understanding of dinosaur behaviour and the evolution of flight. By using their plumage to flush out prey, ancient dinosaurs will have paved the way for the majestic wings and tails that we see in birds today. Should animals have the right to vote? Imagine if horses and cows could have had a referendum prior to the Industrial Revolution. Or if police dogs could vote for their right to a minimum wage. Or even Larry the Downing Street cat. What do you think he would have thought of Brexit? (laughs) So, should animals have the right to vote? Yes, you heard that correctly. A new paper is shaking up the political landscape with a bold proposal. At first glance, the notion of animals casting ballots might sound completely absurd, but hold on because this proposal is actually rooted in some surprisingly sound logic. The crux of the argument lies in the concept of representation. In the same way that some governments allow animals' legal rights to be enforced through human representatives, this paper suggests extending that principle to the voting booth. Think of it as a natural progression of existing practices. And it's an interesting concept from a philosophical standpoint. If people can stand in for children, could this then extend to non-human animals as well? And more than anything, this concept seems to be a matter of principle. Specifically, the all-affected interests principle. In simple terms, if you're impacted by governmental decisions, shouldn't you have a say in those decisions? Everyone who has interests and is affected by those governmental decisions should therefore be allowed to take part in the political process leading to those governmental decisions. Ultimately, it's a notion rooted in fairness and equality. But let's address the elephant in the room. Critics may argue that animals lack the cognitive capacity to participate in the political process. They obviously can't pick up a pen and cross a box at the polling booth, but the author of the paper isn't buying this. After all, defining competence is actually quite complicated, especially when it comes to human beings. Who decides who's competent enough to vote? So where does this leave us? Well, under the proposed system, humans would act as proxies, but only on issues directly affecting their welfare, like animal husbandry and fishing regulations. Whether you find the idea of animal voting visionary or completely absurd, It's definitely sparking conversations about representation, equality, and the evolving nature of democracy itself. So there you have it. Those were some of the wildest stories from the week. Hit the like button, click subscribe, and I'll see you back here next week to catch you up on all things wild.